Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be an updated Ritual Beast deck profile for February 2019. Now, this is a deck that I always like to mess around with, whether it's playing on streams when I get bored or whatever. It's definitely a deck that I constantly keep tabs on, and I always like to mess around with when I get into a state where I'm like, I want to see if this deck has better chances now than it did previously. But this deck is a very, very interesting deck. It's a deck that gives you a lot of room to grow as a player when you're trying to figure out how this deck works and it's a relatively cheap deck it's a very cheap rogue deck that if you want to play it at a locals or play it at a regional it's definitely something that could get top eight or top 32 at different regionals across the country um, just because it is still inherently a strong deck you just have to be mindful of how to play it and all that sort of stuff and it's very easy to pick up but it's very hard to master which means it's a very very cheap deck to start getting your hands into and learning how to like fully manage combo resources in a very strict environment which almost always just does nothing but improve your mindset when approaching other decks that are more open with their resources but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you this deck profile and then i'm going to show you just the basic elder conahawk play for three searches after the deck profile is done but before i get into the deck profile if you are new here Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more awesome content, some more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, stuff like that. And if you like this video, drop a like, do stuff like that. As well as if you want to watch my multi-times a week live streams where I play this deck and other decks on Dueling Book and Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, link is in the description to my Twitch page if you want to go and follow that and get notified when the streams go live. But anyway, into the deck profile. Three copies of Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. Uh, this card is like the most like important starter card in your deck, so you definitely max it on three. Uh, only one copy of Win to be the name. Uh, with Goldstart going to one, this card has lost a lot of value. Um, it's just literally you just want it to be there for the name. Sometimes it does come up with its effect, but you're rarely ever using it uh, for that aspect. When Gold Sark was at three, you could get away with like running three Gold Sark and three Win to be like an additional starter uh, combination of cards to complement Elder Conahawk and Elder Rampangu. But unfortunately, uh, that ship has sailed. Uh, but carrying on, we have one Ritual Beast Tamer Laura and two Ritual Beast Tamer Zephyr Pilicas. Uh, there's two specifically because I'm playing the Oracle of Zephyr package alongside Brain Research Lab in this deck to make the deck inherently a bit more consistent. But as well as the fact that your Elder Conahawk and your Elder Rampangu plays almost always access this card in some way off of the first uh, like Ulti Conahawk search or just somewhere down the line. Like Elder Conahawk searches Laura as its first uh, Ulti Conahawk search to extend the play into Ulti Human Falcos, summoning Laura and re reviving a card. Excuse me. Um, so like, if you actually just draw these cards, you just get to search three cards in uh, that are just like traps. You just get to search like three Steeds or two Steeds ambush um, if you open one of these cards along with Elder Conahawk. Um, but then they also just complement the field spell package really well. That's why they are being played at the numbers they are. But then, three copies of Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. Uh, this card is fantastic. This card is a floater. Um, it's both a Ritual Beast Tamer and a Spiritual Beast name. Cannot say enough good things about this card. Uh, but that makes ten uh, Tamers, as it were. Even though Winda is technically both, uh, it's just like, it's ten Psychic Monsters. So, like, that, that is the ratio that I'm playing for those. Even though Tamer does count, uh, even though Winda does count as both a Tamer and a Beast, because of her name, uh, like, it actually works with Brain Research Lab, so it can. it's basically more of a tamer than anything else. But going into the beasts, three copies of Spiritual Beast uh, Conahawk, and then three copies of Spiritual Beast Rampangu. Uh, these are your bread and butter guys. These are what get you into all of your extra resources that you gain through the plays. Um, and like now that we have Kimun Falcos, Rampangu is again really good. Um, ever since we got Kimun Falcos, uh, Rampangu again is like a good starter. Whereas once Ulti Conahawk went to one, and you couldn't just throw an Ulti Conahawk out of your extra deck to make Rampangu send Conahawk to grave from your deck, uh, like just Elder Conahawk was like the plays that you had. And then like Rampangu plays always required an additional like extender. Whereas now they are back on par with uh, Elder Conahawk plays. Um, even if they're only just slightly below what Elder Conahawk does, it's still, like, super powerful because you're able to access Conahawk and then summon it with Kimun Falcos. But, the last Spiritual Beast name is one copy of Apelio. Uh, I do not play Petalfin in this list. Uh, you could definitely side it for, like, decks like Pure Thunder Dragon just because, like, you could summon it and bounce Colossuses and stuff. Uh, but I found that, like, that almost never comes up in, like, an optimal game state window where it would be, like, the right play to do. Um, and, like, Danger Thunder Dragon is already, like, a super hard matchup for you anyway, so, like, going second against that, Petalfin doesn't really help you. Um, but, like, 
a paleo is like it's it's fine. Like the reason that I'm playing the ratios that I'm playing is because there's the paleo, there's the conahawk, there's the rampangu, there's winda. Pilica, Laura, Wynn, and Elder, that's eight names. So if you play Petalfin, that puts you to nine names, which means you have an odd number of names, which means that sometimes, you, while you can access, like, it and not a Paleo and, like, have, like, a name you're not using a turn, um, like, having an even number of names just make your, makes your turns flow a lot smoothly, a lot more smoothly, because you, like, have a mental idea of what you're trying to do. Um, and, like, the cards you're trying to out with Petalfin don't usually matter that much. I mean, you could... You, it comes up in, like, grind matchups, which is why I would say maybe side deck the card, but in the main deck, it's just not worth... Um, like, it would come up against matchups where, like, you shouldn't really be having that hard of a time against anyway, like, you know, like, bouncing, like, floodgates and stuff, but, like, those floodgates would be hitting you anyway, so, like, it it's really weird. Petalfin is a card that I've just never really been a big fan of, uh, as far as, like, the cards that it outs, unless that card is, like, Royal Decree, and then, like, you soft lock your opponent under them having to set it every turn, but it just gets bounced. However, <laughs> carrying on, last monsters in the deck are five hand traps, uh, two ash and three droll. Uh, you like Danger Thunder Dragon is this deck's hardest matchup because like you're they're just doing all these things in the grave, so Steeds doesn't really uh, get a lot of value, and then they summon Colossus, um, which means that Steeds can't pop that because they're just gonna banish cards from grave. Uh, you just want a card that allows you to, when you're going second, have a turn to play against them because if you're playing against their board of Archfiend Abyss, Colossus, and Zombie Stein. Uh, you're not really going to be having uh, that good of a time. But if you draw them, then you get to guaranteed have a turn. And if you're able to play that turn, usually uninterrupted because of the way that deck is built, uh, you're able to force the deck uh, into a simplified game state with you. And your deck is inherently going to be superior in those game states because you're going to be playing cards to interact with theirs. They are not going to be playing too many cards to interact with you on your turn. And you're just going to be doing things like steedsing them, striking them, summoning windows that they have to deal with uh, and try to float with, um, and stuff like that. So it's just to try and get you a turn. That's what the drolls are there for. Uh, and then Ash is just a generically good card. Uh, but like Droll is definitely the unfair hand trap that you're trying to use against the deck to get yourself a turn. But anyway, that is all the monsters for the spells. I'm playing the Oracle Zephyr Brain Research Lab into Terraforming Field Spell Package. Uh, Oracle Zephyr is just another way to get into Pilica. Uh, terraformings essentially means that there's three copies of both of these cards in my deck, but I just search whichever one I need when I want it because they are not good to draw in multiples of themselves. Um, and if you draw one of each, then that's good too because you just go Oracle Zephyr for Pilica and then bring Research Lab to summon the Pilica. So, like, if you open two terraformings, if you open literally any combination of two of these four cards, like, it's still really good. So, like, that's why this package is being played. Uh, but Brain Research Lab, it's core function at the very minimum is to make every single tamer that's not elder into elder because it gives you an additional normal summon of a psychic monster in addition to your normal summoner set um but that actually comes up a lot where like if you have a hand of like conahawk win and brain research lab you can go conahawk banish a, a monster and then normal win and then win brings that back so like that just like plays into your combo a little bit better as well uh same thing with like a uh, pilica and uh uh, Laura with like a Rampangu so like it gives you weird interactions like that that just make the play better uh, but also like at, at its base level it's just making everything into an Elder so that's what it's there for one copy of Foolish uh, because it complements the uh, the six copies of cards you're playing to bring back cards back so you've got the Terraformings for the Oracle Zephyra with the two Pilicas and the Loras at six cards so this is just like an additional starter card whereas like Gold Sark doesn't work with anything else other than win uh, this works, like, with six cards, so that's why it's worth playing. Uh, but then one copy of Dimensional Fissure. I'm not playing Macro in the main deck, uh, but this card, like, uh, this card is pretty decent against hand traps that I want to stop, like Droll and Lockbird. I don't really care about other hand traps. Ash Blossom doesn't really hurt this deck because they stop one search. You still get two other ones, depending on what your hand is like. Uh, but Dimensional Fissure, it turns your Rampangu into a better combo card. Uh, it stops Droll because Droll specifically has to send from hand to grave, and it can't do that under Fissure. And then this card is just really good against danger effects um, and stuff like that because they don't hit the graveyard, so that's why this card is in my deck. Um, Macro is in the side deck for more of those matchups where like uh, you want more cards like Dimensional Fissure, uh, but Macro isn't a combo card, whereas this is because like it gets you to your um, Rampangu being better and uh, stuff like that. So, two copies of Call by the Grave. Uh, if I had room for a third, I'd play a third. These are good against Danger, obviously, which this deck does struggle with. I've made that point a couple of times. But it's also good against Salamangrates as well, uh, because they make Bay Lynx and put it in the grave. 
and that like turns off your steeds. Um, and like they can make two bay links and put those in grave if they want to, because all your turn one plays that you're playing, you're showing them two steeds that you're searching, which means that two bay links would play through that um, if they put two bay links in grave. So it means you're either steedsing them really early. Or, if you have Call by the Grave, you're able to Call by the Grave one of their Bay Lynxes and then Steeds to get the other one out of their Grave, and then you have a Steeds left over because you searched two, and then you're able to just hit their board. And then they're, uh, they're not really able to do anything from there because their Rage and their Roar are turned off, and all the Salamangrate monsters require there to be, like, Salamangrate cards on field uh, for stuff to happen. Uh, but anyway, into the traps. There's ten of them. There's three copies of Steeds and one copy of Ambush. Uh, Ambush isn't even really needed anymore, strangely enough. Uh, it's like weird when this the way this deck plays you end up with tagging out your fusion on your opponent's draw phase to summon a window back and then something else and then you have ulti human falcos on the on the field as well which tags out into two more guys so that's essentially like ambush is already built onto your field um so like i almost never search this card it comes up in grind games though uh but like the instances where i'm searching three cards turn one and i have to search laura as my first card to make the play work i'm always going laura double steeds but if I open Laura or Pilica and I get the third search for a trap, depending on the matchup, I'm still just searching the third steeds. Um, <laughs> I almost, I rarely ever search the ambush unless it's like the game is just proving itself to be really long. Uh, but I mean, it does come up occasionally, but otherwise it just, it doesn't seem to matter that much with the way the deck functions now. But anyway, uh, last six traps in the deck is the uh, Old Man Squad, uh, Three Strike, Warning, Judgment, and Order. Uh, this is a floodgate, so like this is pretty self-exclamatory. Um, this could be macro, but I feel like order is just better in variance situations. Uh, but these, I want these specifically over cards like Infinite Impermanence or other Floodgates, because one, like, there's no, like, clear-cut Floodgate that this deck can play, um, that's, like, good against the entire field. This deck can play There Can Only Be One and Goes and Match. It can, it can play Goes and Match really well, and it can sort of play There Can Only Be One. Um, but, uh, these cards are just better than impermanence in my eyes because like these negate the danger cards and the stuff that it's triggering in grave which is what this deck struggles with as i've already said um and then like it also removes the threat from the board and like negates summons which means that uh that we're going to be in situations where we're making our steeds more powerful if we're not using them if our opponent is trying to play into steeds but then they're getting hit by strikes that they don't know we're there then like that's super super valuable for you but anyway going into the extra deck Three copies of Ritual Beast, Ulti Human Falcos. This card is insane. Uh, this card is insane for multiple reasons. Like, the additional summon is great, but also the fact that it's a card you can properly summon, unlike your fusions. Your fusions aren't proper fusion summons, which means if they went to the grave, you could never revive them with Laura or Pilica. This card, if you link summon it and it goes to grave, you can revive it with Laura and Pilica. And that's kind of insane, because you can just Laura uh, this back, and then, like, this can use its effect to give you additional normal summon and then this can tag itself out for two ritual beasts that are banished and so like that just makes huge huge comeback swings off of Lorica and Pil Laura and Pilica which is another reason why I think that uh, like ambush just doesn't come up that often but also that's really good for like link climbing plays because you can make like boar load really easily with that um, because this is just a link to this revivable uh, like a bunch of different stuff this card is fantastic uh, but then the fusions uh, one ulti Conahawk, one ulti Petalfin, three ulti Apaleos, and one ulti Guy Paleo, which does not get made that much. And also, apparently, none of my stores in my area have this card. I went to all of them. <laughs> I looked on all their sites and went to all of them to see if they had it in backstock. Uh, I had to order it online, and it's not here yet, so this is a proxy. Oops. Um, but uh, these like these cards are just, you know, your, your generic good cards. Uh, this card doesn't get made that often, but it is easier to make now for the exact same reason. Uh, that I just talked about with Ulti Keemoon Falcos, because you can just go Laura, bring back Keemoon Falcos, uh, Laura or Pilica, bring back Keemoon Falcos, and then Keemoon Falcos, additional normal, uh, another dude, and then you can just, like, immediately make Ulti Guy Paleo with the Keemoon Falcos as the, uh, as one of the requirements. So, going further into this extra deck, one copy of Abyss Dweller and one copy of, uh, Honor Arc. This card's just come up, weirdly enough. Like, Rank 4 has hardly ever come up in this deck. Um, this could be a Baguska, this could be a Lightning Shidori, but Lightning Shidori gets kind of weird. Um, this card has come up more than Lightning Shidori, uh, just because of, like, I don't know, just, like, the fact that I need something that stays on the field. Uh, but you could play the Lightning Shidori in place of it. I've just found this to be more useful, um, which is why I'm playing it over Castell or Lightning Shidori or anything like that. But, carrying on, Linky Boys, uh, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and Borlode Dragon are just the generic good links that I'm playing in this deck because you usually don't really need to go into these cards. 
uh, but you can just out more cards. Like, Steeds is usually clearing a lot of shit, uh, and then you're able to go into Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn spin more cards. Uh, and then, like, uh, you could make Borlo Dragon, depending on if you want to just take something that you can't get over in any other method. Uh, but that's basically the entire deck list. So, let me clean this up real quick, and let me show you just how Elder Conahawk works to get you three searches. Alright, so this is a pretty easy combo. This is just your bread and butter first turn combo of Elder plus Conahawk. Uh, it gets you three searches. Uh, if you don't have Laura or Zephyr Pilica or Oracle of Zephyr or Terraforming to get into the Zephyr Pilica, you are going to be using your first search on Laura, um, and then your next two searches are going to be for traps, and you're going to end on Ulti Human Falcos and uh, and a Winda and an Apelio. So like you're you're really well off for how you could structure for your next turn. But so you're going to normal summon the Elder. Elder is going to give you additional normal summon for Conahawk, and you are going to use the Conahawk's effect to banish the Rampangu from your deck. Then you're going to banish the Elder and the Conahawk to summon your Ulti Conahawk, and you're going to use Ulti Conahawk's effect, targeting your Conahawk and your Elder to be sent to the graveyard to search. But then you're going to chain your Ulti Conahawk's tag out effect to put it back into your extra deck, and you're going to revive your Penguin and your Elder. So Conahawk goes to the grave, and you are then going to search for your Laura or your Pilika. So you're going to search for Laura here. Laura is just the one I usually go for first because Pilika is in deck and it can be searched off Oracle Zephyr. You've got more copies of it uh, to make that a name that's in circulation. Getting Laura just seems better. But so now from here, you're going to use the uh, Rampangu's effect that is on your field. And you're going to banish an Ulti Apelio from your extra deck. And you're going to send the Apelio from your deck to the graveyard. And then from here, we are going to Link Summon into Ulti Kimun Falcos with the Elder and the Rampangu. So at this point, we have a lot of our stuff in the graveyard in terms of our ritual beast names but that's fine because that's going to all be sorted out by ulti key moon falcos here but so now ulti key moon falcos is going to use its effect to give us an additional normal summon and what we're going to do is we're going to banish the apaleo because that has not been summoned this turn these two cards have the conahawk has not been special summoned this turn so it's still live and so that's what we're going to bring back with this laura that we're summoning right now so laura gets to special summon the conahawk and then Conahawk gets to use its effect to banish a card from our deck, and it is going to banish Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. So we have the Laura that hasn't used its special, hasn't been special summoned this turn, a Paleo that hasn't been special summoned, and the uh, uh, Winda that hasn't been special summoned this turn. But so now from here, you are going to banish the Laura and the Conahawk to make your Ulti Conahawk again, and you're going to use Ulti Conahawk. You're going to target the Ulti Apelio to go to grave, and then just any one of your names that you're going to summon that uh, that hasn't been summoned this turn. So, you're going to uh, target the Laura in this case, and then you're going to chain the Conahawk tag out to go back to your extra deck, and you're going to summon the Laura from your banished pile, and you're going to summon the Apaleo from your banished pile, because that's the only uh, spiritual beast that has not been used this turn. Ulti Apaleo goes to grave, fulfilling the requirements for Conahawk, and then you are going to search your first card. So you're going to search Ritual Beast Steeds, or your first trap card. You've already searched Laura. And then from here, Apelio is on the field, so it's just good for resource management. That you, it just lets you banish a card here anyway. So you just have to banish like the Elder or the Rampangu. doesn't really matter. And then from here, you're going to link the Laura and the Apelio. Or not link, excuse me. You're going to contact Fuse again into Ulti Conahawk. And this time, you're going to use Ulti Conahawk to just raw dog send two to grave. So you're going to send the, uh, the Elder, and you're going to send the Laura to grave. And that is going to get you a search. You can't tag out anymore because the only card that hasn't been summoned this turn or special summoned is uh, Winda, um, and you need to be able to summon two. So, so you're going to use this to search for either a second copy of Steeds or Ambush. I always go for the second copy of Steeds before I go for Ambush because it's just better overall. Like I said, your board has essentially got an Ambush built into it. And so you've got these, you set them, and you had the three other cards that were in your hand when you started this play, which could be traps or whatever. And then during your opponent's draw phase, you're going to use Ulti Conahawk to tag out, and you are going to summon your Apelio and your Winda, and then your Apelio is going to immediately banish uh, either Laura or Elder. Uh, you just want to be in a spot where you have uh, a name banished, a, a tamer name with the Conahawk banished, and then you have uh, the Rampangu and the Elder in your grave still in this case. But this is so that you could tag out this uh, into these names if you wanted to. Or if Winda dies and summons a fusion from your extra deck to this zone, you could tag that out for these two names that are over here as well. But that is the basic gist of it. Like it's this is the simplest turn one play, 
Um, it's obviously modifiable if you have Laura or Pilica in your hand already, or the Oracle Zephra, then you just get a third trap because you didn't have to search this. Uh, so like it was in your hand, so you just get a third copy of Steeds. Um, and like this is a really strong board that leads into a lot of good shenanigans going into your next turn. So I would definitely recommend you guys give this deck a try if that is something that you are wanting to learn and mess around with. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, like the video if you liked this sort of thing and want to see more content like it or with this deck. And subscribe if you're new here, like I've said previously. If you want to see more content, I'd love to welcome you on board. Also, like I said before, if you want to see my weekly live streams that happen multiple times a week, uh, then go follow the Twitch link in the description. <laughs> but also there's a link in the description to my Discord server if you want to go join that and talk with me and other people on a daily basis about this and other fandoms. Yu-Gi-Oh! and other fandoms is stuff that we like to discuss. But, like I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.